Quite often in Power BI, you would have to do like for like comparison. What do I mean by that? Let's just say that you're working with some data and the data is for two years, 2011 and 2012. But the 2012 data is not for the entire year. It's only up till a certain month, let's say August. Now, if you're comparing growth over last year, then I just want to consider the growth over last year for August to August for both the years. That means Jan to August for 2011 and Jan to August for 2012 as well. But if you're writing conventional formulas in Power BI, that is not going to automatically consider that. How do you solve this problem? Well, let's find out. All right, people, let's take a look at the problem first and then we'll try to solve it. So I'm working with the simple data model, which is where I have two dimension tables. One is calendar, the other one is products. And then we have the sales table, which is our fact table. And to this, I have built a very simple visualization, which is where the year and the month are the two columns coming from the calendar table against which total sales is calculated. And I've also calculated last year's sales and the growth of that. Let's just take a look at the measures that I have already done. So total sales is nothing but the price we look up, which is the price from the products table multiplied by the units. And then eventually you sum up all the values that makes the sales. Then if you take a look at the last year sales, I've used a very simple measure, which is same period last year. I'm sure if you know of that, and this pushes the date to the last year and calculates the sales in that order. So I calculate total sales, but for the last year, and that gives me the last year sales. If you wanna quickly verify the numbers, you can also do that. So in the month of Jan 2011, the sales was about 1200, and that is the sales that we see in the next year against the last year calculation, which is right here. So this number is going to be compared with this number, and that gives me 188% growth. So far, so good. But let's also take a look at the growth formula real quick. So the two variables defined are current year number and the last year number. This is my total sales and the last year measure that we just took a look at, and this, check is just to mitigate all the useless numbers that are going to come up in case the last year number is not present or the current year number is not present. This is my simple growth formula, which is current year divided by last year minus one, which gives me the growth value. Now this looks good for all of the months from January to August, and I am comparing month on month and I'm finding out the growth over last year. But if you take a look at the totals right here, which is nothing but this particular number, this number although is absolutely correct because if you take a look at 2011 total number, this matches with this, that's right. The sales in the current year is $30,000 and if you technically find the growth rate, it is about 68%, which is also right. But logically this is incorrect because if you think about it, in the current year, the sales only has been for the first eight months of data, that's all that we have. So ideally, I should compare the first eight months with the eight months of the last year. That means I should stop calculating my last year numbers all the way from here. And in the total as well, I should then be able to compare only eight months of 2011 and then find out the growth. That means the growth number is going to be way higher as compared to what it is at the moment. Now, how do we solve the problem? Now, to be able to solve this problem, we're going to take two approaches. The first approach is going to be a pure play DAX approach. We'll write some formula, probably a little longer one, and then we'll be able to solve that. And then we'll take a look at a data modeling approach and try to shorten our formula by building the logic in our model. This is gonna be fun. Let's start with the first one. Before we step into the DAX rabbit hole, let's just try to understand the logic, try to understand the broad picture, and then we will construct some DAX logic around that. So now the logic simply says that, for the totals especially, for this particular number, I do not want to consider all the months of 2011. I just want to consider the months up till 2012 last month. So if you take a look in our data, if I just go back to the table right here, which is my sales table, and if I sort the dates in the descending order, I am seeing that my last date in the sales table is 29th August 2012. That means that for 2011 as well, I would like to consider the last date of August. Probably not 29 because I'm considering that to be the end of the month, but I still want to consider 31st of August 2011 to be the last date. And up until that, the sales should be calculated. It should be dynamic, by the way, because if you have September data later coming in the model, then the date should automatically shift to September. Now, how do we build that? Let's take a look. The first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to create a new measure 
and let's just call this as my sales last year revised, right? And I am going to start to build, first of all, a pattern of dates. And the pattern of dates is only going to take a look at dates up until August of the last year. So let's declare a variable. So I'm just going to say var, and this is going to be my max date. Now think about it. The max date is obviously come from the sales table and the largest date within that. So if I just say something like, hey, please find the max date in the sales uh, table and the date column right here. Now this this answer is going to be uh, in this particular filter context is going to be 29th of August. Let's just see that. So if I just happen to say return, and if I just happen to return my max date right here, press enter and drag the revised formula right here, you can see that the date that we get at the totals level is obviously up until the month of August 2012. Now, I don't really want to have this, I want to have it for the end of the month. And obviously, I don't really want to have it for the end of the month of the current year. I want to have it for the end of the month of the last year, that means 2011. To do that, I'm going to use a very simple uh, formula adjustment here. I'm going to say EO month, which pushes the date to the previous year. So EO month of this particular date, minus 12, push it to the last year month end date. Let's just take a look at the result right now. This becomes 31st of August 2011, and that is right. Now, this should be my end point. And what should be my start point? My start point should obviously be 2011 at the start of January. So let's create uh, another variable. So I'm going to say var, and this is going to be my min date, which is going to be, hey, the min of the calendar date, and that is going to be my end date. Now, obviously, this is going to be for the last year, so not for the current year. So again, I will use the edate function to push it 12 months behind, and that is going to give me my date. Let's just also check this real quick. So I'm just going to call this variable out press enter and what I get at the total right here, this is 2011 month of Jan and the first date. So 1st of Jan up until the max date, which is 29th or oh sorry, 31st of August. Now, all that I do is I just build a range of dates between the first date and the last date. And the function to do that is going to be my dates between function. So I'll declare another variable. So this is my last year dates, which is going to be, let's say dates between and I'm starting, uh, my calendar date is right here. My start date, which is this particular input, is nothing but my min date, and my end date is nothing but my max date right here. Now, at the moment, the dates between formula is going to give you a table, and you can't really drag a table in a, in a cell right here, technically a visual, so we'd have to do some wrapping around and work with that. So, for the moment, what I'm gonna do is, I am going to calculate last year's sales for this particular range of dates that we have created. How do I do that? It's very simple. All that I will do is I'll say calculate, calculate nothing but my total sales, but not for the blanket same period last year, obviously, but this time for the range of dates that we have created, which is right here. So I'm just gonna maybe pick that variable up, push it down right here, which is my last year dates, close the bracket, press enter, and that gives me a number. Let's just verify the number. So at the moment, at the totals level, I can see that the number that I get is 8915. That means that this is trying to say that the sales in 2011 from January up until August was 8915. I wanna verify that. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my total sales measure, which I presume it to be the correct measure, and I will push that right, right here. And I'll select a bunch of filters to see that if that is the right number as well. So pick up the month of Jan, Feb, March, April, May, June, July, August, and that is 8.92. If you round it off and you kind of remove the thousand denomination, we are going to get to this particular number, which is 8915, seems to be the right number. So good to go. Now, using this particular logic, we are going to calculate our growth and that is going to be good. All that I will do is I will just go to my growth calculation and in my growth calculation, I will just plug the revised measure. So instead of sales last year, which was using the same period last year calculation, I will just use the revised calculation right here. And this is now doing the right calculation, 245% when compared with $30,000 and $8,900. That is absolutely right. Now this was probably a little longer DAX logic. Now let's just take a look at how can we make this logic shorter by our data modeling approach. All right, to be able to understand the data modeling approach, it's absolutely essential to understand that what logic am I trying to build it in the model so that I don't have to do that calculation within the DAX. Take a look. So if you take a look at the revised DAX measure that we wrote, uh, which is especially for the last year, 
we created a pattern of dates and the pattern of dates was taking a look at the max of the current year sales. So it was taking a look at the current year and then moving that dates to the last year. And this is where we were creating this custom kind of date range to only take a look at the end month of the current year and moving that to the last year. Now that is also something that we will have to come up in uh, our model as well. So to be able to build that check, that means please stop after the month of August is something that we will have to build it in our model itself. So let's just go to the calendar table and let's just build the check of that. So right click here and I'm just going to make a new column and in the new column, I am just going to build, let's say sales end check, sales end check. All right. The first thing that I would want to do in this particular table, because the calendar table is going to have all the dates, no matter the sales was present or not present. Now I will first check that what is the last date in the sales table date column. So I'm going to say something like, Hey, please find the max of the sales table date column. And this should return me 29th of uh, August, 2012 for all the rows of the data. And that's the number that we have. That's nice. Now, obviously this is going to be pushed to the end of the month. So EO month is going to be the current month. So which is going to push the date to 31st of August. And that's nice. Now I want to check, Hey, this date, are you less than or equal to this date or not? If you are less than the largest date in the sales table, then obviously then I want to run the calculation for you. If not, then I want to remove the calculation for you, obviously. So I'm going to go and do something like this. I will say, Hey, take the calendar date, which is every single date in the row. And please compare that if that is a less than or equal to the max state that we have just calculated. If the check is true, I'm going to get a true. If the check is false, I'm going to get a false, obviously. And after 31st of August, I'm going to get all the falses. So if I just maybe filter on the false, and you're going to see that if I sort this in the ascending order, you can see that from September onwards, I have all the falses right here. And that is good. That means stop the calculation after September. How do we implement this logic in our model? So let's just go take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and create another measure. So right click new measure and I'm going to call this as sales last year revised to uh, and I am going to write a piece of logic. Now the logic is something like this. I want to say that, Hey, I still want to do that this calculation, which is calculate total sales. And in fact, let's just actually do the calculation in this very measure right here. So I still want to do total sales calculation for the last year, but I would like to apply a filter first. That means that please go ahead and apply this particular filter in the calendar table and only consider the truths. So once you apply the filter and your filter context is set to 2012, only August dates are going to be pushed backwards. So take a look, you'll understand. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this particular calculation and I'm going to say, Hey, I would like to apply another filter within the calculate. And I would like to say something like first apply this filter, which is my check filter. So uh, this particular check filter, apply this filter, this should be equal to true. And once you've applied this filter, that means only the relevant dates are considered, then you go ahead and push the dates backward to the last year and then do the calculation. And that's about it. If you kind of press enter, you can see that the numbers actually show up, right? Which is eight, nine, one, five. And if this number feeds into the growth calculation, this is also going to give us the right answer. Way more simpler DAX as compared to what we had it before. And obviously once you have built this particular check, this check can be used in variety of the calculations, which is where you'd like to stop until the max of the current year sales ending date. And that is the beauty about it. All right, that's been it. Let me know your thoughts about the two approaches. Would you prefer the DAX pure play approach or would you prefer the data modeling approach? Which one jives with you? Please put down a comment. If you have any questions, also put in a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX Power Query and the M language courses. I have them and they are brilliant. And a lot of people are learning in a structured way to level up their problem solving skills and get to a level where they can solve and think about problems of their own data as well. If you're trying to level up your Power BI skills, I would love for you to be the part of the course. Thanks so much for sticking around all this while in this video. And of course, I'm going to catch you guys in the next one.